Hello and welcome back to Large Format Friday. Each Friday there's going to be a new upload on this channel that adds to a playlist that you'll see down below talking about large format photography. Last week we talked about loading large format film holders and this week we're going to get to the fun stuff, the glass. Much of the look that you're going to get out of your large format setup doesn't come from your camera or your film. It's going to come from your lens. The lens controls a lot of what's going on in terms of your look and exposure. Now, while there's some aesthetic things to consider, your focal length, your maximum aperture, and even how sharp the lens is, uh, there's a few common denominators that you're going to want to look out for in whatever large format lens you end up getting. To talk some more about large format lenses, I brought my favorite 8x10 wide angle lens, my Schneider Super Simar XL 150mm f5.6. It's kind of a beast of a lens if you're used to smaller 4x5 lenses or 35, uh, but it's actually pretty small on the scale of 8x10 lenses. Anyway, this lens uh, illustrates really, really nicely the four main components that you're going to find on any large format lens, and those are your front element group, which is this kind of large hourglass shape in the front. The rear element group, which is behind our lens board right here. So we have a front group, a rear group, that's just the glass. And then we have the real meat and potatoes, which is our leaf shutter with aperture blades and our mounting hardware. In the case of this lens, the retaining ring. All of these work together in order to give you the right focal length, the right look, and hopefully the right amount of exposure. So if you're used to a 35 millimeter or medium format camera, many of those cameras will have focal plane shutters that control shutter speed through the camera. These guys have leaf shutter lenses. Now leaf shutters do occur in some 35 millimeter rangefinders and certain medium format cameras, but large format, it's pretty much all leaf shutters. So on my large format shutter, I control shutter speed by moving my little dial here. The little red dot is moving toward these whole numbers. These are my fractions of a second. So 400th of a second all the way down to B, which is bulb exposure and T, which is a timed exposure. Um, those allow me to do long exposures with a cable, uh, plunger style cable release. Not only do I control shutter speeds because this is a leaf shutter and it has an electronic contact a PC socket for triggering flash, I can actually trigger my flash with max sync speeds up to 1 400th of a second. This is great if you do a lot of off-camera flash or studio shooting. This lens has an aperture control. That's this little lever up here. So I go from f5.6 all the way down to f64. It even goes a little smidge beyond on that one. And there's a few other components on this lens. I mentioned there was a lot going on here. So uh, this little guy on the left hand side, that's my firing lever. It's not doing anything right now because I haven't cocked the shutter. To cock the shutter, I need to pull this little guy, pull it counterclockwise, and now my shutter's armed. It's on T, which means I have to click my shutter firing twice. Once to open the lens, and a second time to close. Let's do that again real slowly for the camera. I'm going to cock and open and close. I'm going to do that one more time. I'm going to cock the lens, fire, to open, fire to close. Let's do that one more time. Cock the lens, once, twice. That's a time exposure on there. Okay, so now that we've seen the shutter in action, let's cover our hardware on here once again. We have our little firing lever, our little port where we can put our Cable release, we have our aperture lever, our shutter speeds posted in whole numbers on here, our cocking lever that arms the shutter so we can then fire it. And then over here, we have our electronic flash contacts, our PC sync, and then this little guy. This is what's called our preview lever. Not all large format lenses have these. So if you have an older style lens, don't panic. You don't need it, but it really, really helps. This opens up the shutter from a closed position so we can view things on the ground glass and still ch check how our focus looks with our aperture at various settings. And then the only downside about having this is we have to remember to close the lens. If I don't close the lens, I could accidentally let, let some light into my film. It's a lot of things that can happen by accident with our large format lenses, especially when you're getting started with it. 
One of the things that gets glossed over a lot on large format lenses, and I really think shouldn't, is this important little thing right here that holds my large format lens to this board right here, my lens board, and that's the mounting hardware. This particular lens uses a retaining ring. That's just a little ring that threads on the back of the shutter assembly that holds it via tension. The only thing holding this thing on here is this little metal retaining ring right here. Without that, well, I would have to use like tape or something. Please don't use tape to do this. All right, so kind of recapping what our large format lenses uh, have on them and what they can do. They should have a front group of elements, a leaf shutter, mounting hardware, and a rear group of elements. Okay, so we've got our large format lens. It's in the shutter. We've tested it out. Everything looks good, but now we need to get it onto the camera. To do so, we need to put it onto our lens board. This is a lens in a Copal number one shutter, so we're gonna to need to have a lens board with a matching shutter hole opening. Our common sizes are Copal Zero, which has a 34 millimeter opening, a Copal one, which has about a 42 millimeter opening, and a Copal three, which is a big old hole, has about a 65 millimeter opening. There's some other specialty sizes in there, but those are gonna be your main three to choose from. So we already have our lens board drilled out. We need to take apart this large format lens so we can mount it through our lens board. Here's our steps to do that. Step one, use the preview lever on the back of the shutter to open the shutter blades and also make sure that the aperture blades are all the way open. Once we remove this rear group, those blades are gonna be exposed. So moving on to step two, we're just gonna remove the rear group. Do it carefully, you don't wanna cross thread anything. Just set this down on a nice working surface. See how those blades are exposed? If I get a finger in there, I'll get grease or potentially even damage some of the blades on my lens. We don't want that to happen. So we're looking through the shutter, We've got our rear group off. Next thing we're gonna do is remove our retaining ring from the back of the lens. If your large format lens does not come with a retaining ring, like this one that sits on the back of the shutter, it may need one. Um, there are some places online where you can source those or if you know somebody with a CNC mill or a machine shop, they're gonna be your best friend. So that's our retaining ring off. Now what we need to do is get our lens board onto our, onto our shutter. I like to make sure if you have a lens board that has a right side up, you wanna mount it so your shutter speeds and apertures are visible when you mount it on the front of the camera. This one is a square, so it doesn't matter too much. So I line this up over the hole, and then continuing step five, I'm gonna add my retaining ring and get that at least finger tight. Once I've got it finger tight, I need to move to something more aggressive. That's why we have these pins on the back of the retaining ring, so we can apply more pressure. We can do that with a specialty tool called a spanner wrench, or we can use two flathead screwdrivers. I prefer the spanner wrench because Blades near open glass, I'm not a fan of it. So this little tool from Toyo, I believe Jeppy, Rodenstock, Cenar, a bunch of different large format companies made them. This has the different shutter sizes on there. Found Copal One. That will span perfectly, hold the lens board, provide tension, and give it a nice clockwise turn. That is super nice and tight. Now my lens is being held via tension through that ring onto the board. Once I've got that, Final step, number six, replace that rear group. Nice and gentle, don't wanna cross thread anything. Thread that on there. And there we go. Large format lens in a shutter mounted onto a lens board. Well folks, that about does it for the different parts of a large format lens, what's going on with the shutter, and how to mount our large format lens onto our lens board. If you have any questions, feel free to drop those down below in the comments. I try to get to every question when possible. And if you're still not sure if large format's right for you, be sure to subscribe to the channel where each and every Friday, I'm gonna have a new video about something in the large format world. Next week, we're gonna talk about the fun stuff, cameras. Hopefully we'll see you then.